Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning, and hello, kids, and welcome to Season 3 and Episode number 316 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Yeah! Today, recording day, is Tuesday, February 13th, 2024, and it's a beautiful day here at the Beaver Lodge. And we have a treat for you today because February is Black History Month. And with us, we'll have a guest for a couple of minutes from the community who will uh, who plays a pretty key role in uh, helping us uh, tell some stories and uh, oh, yeah. document some history. So um, it's going to be a good time. We're going to have a little bit of a delay, though, because I'm going to own up. <laughs> uh, we uh, were dealing with a public relations company uh, with this one for the guest and um, never occurred to us because normally we find our own guests and we have their email address and then we just send them the link a couple of uh, minutes before the show starts, but never occurred to us that we're dealing with the company that may not have been open <laughs> and that we didn't actually have the email address for our guests. So um, we were sending stuff uh, very quickly quickly at the last minute, hoping that someone would see it and trying to think of an alternative for a show in case we did not have our guest. But everything did happen, and we do have our guest, and she will be with us in a few minutes. She is not late. We were. (laughs) And and when we say we, we mean you. (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, I'm the one that should have thought of that, yes. So I guess me. I would have happily sent it to you last night, but I yep. didn't know. Yep. Never. It just didn't dawn on me until I was about to go send the link. And it's like, oh, crap. I don't actually have an email address for her. Well, she probably uh, has I, a direct forward or something like that, I would assume. so. <laughs> just, oh, we do our own stunts. All right. <laughs> a big thank you goes to our podcast funding sponsors, The Pepper Master, the Miss Fee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com. Whew. But before we do anything else, Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today? Because uh, I've just been on a steep up and then. <laughs> um, I'm pretty good, actually. I was a little, uh, woke up this morning after a good night's sleep. I slept really well last night for a change. Although when I first woke up, I was in a panic because I thought I had to get to a final exam. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't know. I must've been dreaming something. I was like, Oh, I got No, I don't. I don't have any exams. I haven't written an exam in years. So, you know, I take courses all the time, but we have, when you take an online course, you have a test at the end of each module, which is not a final exam. And we all know that panic feeling of I'm late for my final exam of, I don't know, grade 12 history or whatever the case may be. 
there was a scene in the movie, uh, a, a Val Kilmer film, one of his first films, uh, I think it was called Top Secret, where he's uh, he's in a dreamlike state and he's and he's running and panicking, trying to get to his class for the last minute. Then he wakes up and he realizes he's being tortured by Nazis. And he's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> he was relieved to be getting whipped because he was strung up and getting whipped they were trying to torture him for information because he was a spy and uh, yeah he was relieved that it was that and not that he was late for his final exam and every time i think of that scene i laugh hysterically because i would feel the same way <laughs> oh thank god i'm only getting tortured i'm not late for a final exam i'm sure we've all felt that anxiety i know you felt it just a few minutes ago oh my god <laughs> no, my version of that dream is it's opening night for a play. Mm -hmm. And about 30 minutes before the play starts is when I decide I'm going to start studying my lines. And then yeah, that's, 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 uh, that'll, that'll knock you for a sideways loop for sure. And of course, no one's cooperating with me and cooperating with me. And then somewhere along the way, I can't find my pants to get on the stage yes, for yes. my entrance in the first place. So now I don't have, I don't, know, I don't have my lines and I have no time to study them because I'm, tearing the place apart looking for my pants yeah so and, and you wake up and think oh my god thank god it's not real it's not real it's only, but, real. It's only but real. i wake up exhausted from oh that. yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. i was like i spent like, looking i'm just like running everywhere looking everywhere and worried and i get up it's like oh my god i don't feel like i slept at all <laughs> i still get those and of course i didn't study yeah no i same feeling oh my god i'm late for an exam that i'm totally going to blow because i didn't study for it Oh no! It, none of this is. It was a dream. Okay. All right. All right. I'm all right. I'm. I, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, while we're waiting for our guest, well, waiting. Waiting is the wrong word here. So, until yeah, our guest until. graces us with their presence, yeah, exactly. let's put it that way. I'm actually very excited to meet uh, to meet our guest. To be honest with you, because I, I am familiar with a fair bit of her work. And uh, oh, nice! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, like I just uh, I went online and I'm like, oh yes, I've seen that. I've seen that. I know what. To, yeah. And uh, of course, the the, the uh, link you sent me to the Blacks Community mixtapes is kick ass production. And I have watched a couple of episodes um, last night and again this morning. And I'm like, it's so well done. And yeah. They're just. Um, now, I don't know who the writer, director, producer was for it. I wasn't paying attention to that because I was enraptured by the host, Cara Martin, her um, incredible voice. Mm. I just want to sit and I, she could read the dictionary to me. I love her voice. It just It's so engaging. But th the way they've put it together, I think it's, you know, she's she was born in the 90s, so she'd be a millennial. And it's put mm. together for millennials in the sense yep. that they're condensed bite-sized chunks, if you will. Yep. Because we tend to go long form. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is done for, for somebody with a shorter attention span so you can get the young people interested in, in it. And, and then somebody like me, it's like more, give me more. I want more. I want more because it's so well done, well pr produced and put together. And then of course I was seeing, you know, some people from both my childhood and my adulthood, both with, uh, Mike Williams, former much music VJ host. We all remember Mike Williams. And then, of course, uh, Tony Young, Master T. And I worked with Tony on a, a couple of different occasions. We did some parties here in Ottawa nice. that he hosted. Yeah, just a super awesome dude. And, uh, of course, Maestro was on. And uh, I met Maestro uh, once or twice, I think, if, if memory serves. Sweetheart of a guy. And the way they just talk about how hip-hop, uh, the first hip-hop record in Canada was, was uh, uh, Mr. Q, was it? Mr. Q? Yes, I, and, Mr. Q. Yeah, and, and it was sort of a response to uh, the Sugar Hill Gang, Rapper's Delight. This was called Ladies' Delight. And it was, you know, really with the beginning of it. But if, if as far as, as, as hip-hop goes in Canada, for me, I, the godfather is Maestro, Maestro Fresh West, who is still involved in the community. I mean, he's living in St. John, New Brunswick now, but he's, he's involved in film and, and television and radio mm -hmm. and music and production. And the man has... has uh, Put his time in and done a lot of work and of course they talk about mishi me who i've had a crush on since day one the very first time i saw mishi mishi me and she came out and then when she did the track raga death so it was like death metal and hip-hop at the same time and it worked i was like damn and the dream warriors who i mean forget it 
I mean, Tribe Called Quest was around at the same time as the Dream Warriors, but the first time I heard my definition, it blew my mind because oh, it was yeah. like, well, it was a Quincy Jones jazz track, which we all in Canada, if you're of a certain age, knew the song. Yes. It was, uh, um, and it was the a sample of, um, oh, it's a Quincy Jones, and I'm, I'm fi- oh, the name of the song is escaping me right now. But it was used for the soundtrack for the t- uh, the television game show Definition, and right. it was also used in the Austin Powers film because it was Mike Myers' way of of sending a postcard home to Canada. He said, "Definition, my definition of a boombastic jazz style," and it was oh darn it, I'm, I'm gonna go nuts trying to think of the name. Our guest is in the green room though, sir. If we want to, if you want to, uh... Soul Bossa Nova. Thank you, Soul Bossa Nova. Thank you. <sighs> going nuts. <laughs> I knew the track. It was on the tip of my tongue. I featured it on the jazz show. And I've, I think I actually featured that track once on the jazz show because it's hip hop jazz. And it was, again, the first time I heard it, I'm like, oh my God, I'd never heard anything like that before. And like I said, it was right around the time Tribe was coming out. So, but I, for me, it was more to celebrate the Canadian artists. I mean, you know, as a youth, who do we have as Canadian artists? Gordon Lightfoot, Anne Marie, Neil Young. Internationally, mm-hmm. that was kind of it at the time. So when I saw young Canadian hip hop artists producing Canadian music in Canada and, and selling records, I was like, I just want to promote the hell out of this. I was always pro Canadian artists because, you know, we live right next door to the largest market in the world when it comes to television, film, entertainment, music, so on and so forth. So anyway, the rascals. Yeah, of course. Love the rascals. And I've worked with Shaw Cl- Claire a couple of times on some shows, real sweetheart of a guy. Uh, who else do I work with? Socrates a couple of times. I can't remember if I work with Cardinal or, or not. Some shows we did. Our guest is in the green room. So, sir, anytime you want to, uh, you want okay. to uh, present our guest and I'll bring her on in. All right. Get some cubs. Very, 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 very excited about this. Our guest is a renowned Canadian writer, producer, director, and visionary whose recent film and television productions include two Canadian Screen Award winning documentaries being Black in Toronto, and Mr. Jane and Finch for CBC, the two-hour CTV documentary special Cool Black North, and the short drama Promise Me, which has had over 20 festival screenings and six festival wins, including two Golden Sheaves at the 2021 Yorkton Film Festival. Uh, she's a recipient of the Women in Film Television Toronto prestigious Crystal Mentorship Award. She has... Uh, co-founded something called the OYA Media Group and was voted one of 2021's RBC Canadian Women Entrepreneurs, One to Watch. She is the director, the co-creator, and one of the writers of a series that uh, Mr. Grizzly was talking about called Black Community Mixtapes, which recently won an Anthem Award, silver medal at the Anthem Awards. Yes. So... Kits and Cubs, please, 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 please put your paws up and give a big round of applause for Allison Duke. Hello. Hello. Morning. Good Welcome morning. to the Beaver Lodge. Oh, I'm just so thrilled to be here. I, I'm leaving for Berlin today. So my day got a little bit shift or my night got a little shifted packing and all. So uh, oh. thank you for having me. Oh, well, my, thanks for no, joining us. No, thank I'm, you for joining us. And uh, we uh, had some apologies too. We owned up earlier on the show. We're telling people <laughs> you're not late. <laughs> we we're new here, and we do all our own stunts. So this is the first time that we've dealt with an actual production company. We normally just had people's email their addresses directly, and we just send them the link before. And then that just dawned on me. He's like, Uh-oh. "Are they going to even be open?" <laughs> oh no! I, I should have said it last night. So uh, no we're very, very glad that you were actually everything was able to work. Awesome. Um, we uh, always start our show by uh, because I asked my my co-host, Mister Grizzly, uh, how his mental health is doing today every day. So, how is your mental health doing today? Well, I just need to breathe a bit more today. I feel because I have a lot going on. Mm-hmm. And um, I have a flight that's at eight o'clock at tonight, not, not this morning. Oh, good thing. Um, and, um, you know, I'm going to the European, European film market. And so I just need to just relax, you know, just breathe and, you know, not not try to do too much. 
I, I, I <laughs> You're on the right show. That, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all about relax. Just, yeah. just relax. I have a whole YouTube channel about just relax. <laughs> I love your voice too, by the way. Well, thank you very much. Making me relax. That's oh, yeah. that's the general idea. That's what the uh, the, the YouTube <laughs> channel is. It's ASMR mental health chat where I just mm -hmm. sit and talk like this, so you can find some peace. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we'll wish you absolutely uh, an uneventful trip. <laughs> um, I've been watching black community mixtapes i'm actually on uh there's five episodes and i'm actually yes. midway through the fifth one so I've, I've watched them um it's so good it's so well done it is really so well done so i can well see done. why you won yeah first of all <laughs> uh, maybe um if you could tell the our audience what it what your inspiration was behind it well, you know, I've been making films about Black history for a long time. You know, I started out, I, I loved your conversation about all these people, rascals and all that, because I started out producing music videos. In fact, you know, my production company back then, Rage Filmhouse, we produced Northern Touch. We worked with a lot of these people. My brother is an, a, a rapper, you know, um, his name is Spade. His group was called Citizen Kane, you know, and, and so I was in this world for a long time. And, you know, I knew uh, Tony, uh, Master T and Michael Williams. And I just, you know, it just came from this whole hip hop revisionist thing that we're go we were going through for a bit where people were saying, you know, Drake, he's great. He's, you know, am amazing artist, businessman. But, you know, a lot of people were thinking that, oh, hip hop started with Drake, Canadian hip hop started with, with Drake. And I was just like, mm. and then there was other things that people were saying, well, you know, this is the first this, and this is the first that, and, you know, just, you know, messing up the black history there. And then uh, Gaddy Conte George, my business partner, and also the co-director co and co-creator, we just said, we got to do something about this because we had made a lot of work that was dispelling you know, a lot of the noise out there, you know, a lot of the internet noise. And we thought, why don't we just, you know, you go out into the community, you know, um, collect all the information that we know that with people who have artifacts, people who have archives that can prove, disprove some of this stuff. And then also, you know, why don't we use our own archives and then re retell this history? So we looked at five different, you know, topics. We looked at, you know, hip hop, you know, and, and go, going all the way back. We, and, you know, of course there's some people were missing, but mm -hmm. hip hop, and then we went to, um, we did uh, Toronto Carnival and photography and literature. And we then celebrated the archivists themselves, the people mm -hmm. who are collecting this material. Yeah. Um, my, I've not finished five yet, so I can't <laughs> say that, so, but I really, really, really loved, I was drawn in by the episode on hip hop, of course. Mm -hmm because music is universal and hip hop is everywhere now and people want to know. But, and then Caravana, you know, the history of that, of course, we know that. But then when you get to, when you get to the third episode, this, the, the third episode is about photographers. Whoa, did I learn a lot of things that I did not know. See, I uh, did I discover a lot of names I haven't, Michael Chambers, whoa, I, I went know. to his website. I've got a, I've got a Mishy B photo for you. Oh, yeah. From, from his portraits there yeah, later on. Mishy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you get to the episode on literature. And again, that poet talking, uh, I'm Greg, sorry, I'm geeking uh, out Greg, um, Matthew Greg DeCosta. Frank. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Greg uh, Frank. Frankson. Frankson. Yeah, he's a buddy of mine, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, I've known oh, really? Greg for like 20 years. Yeah, we're oh, good friends. Yeah. Okay, we have it's, to get him on, on the it's... show to re read his Everybody story. in Canada knows everybody, right? <laughs> you should you should get him on the show. He's amazing. I'd love to. Oh, yeah, no, I've, I've known Greg for about 20 years, and I remember we were doing a, a charity event a bunch of years back, uh, and, and he just, he, he would just freestyle, freestyle uh, um, slam poetry like nobody's business. Greg is a genius at that. 
an absolute genius. Uh, I've never met anybody who could freestyle so quickly, so poetically, and so um, fluidly in the moment and speak about what we're what we're going through. It's like, how did you come up with that? And he's like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> he does it in the show. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that's one of yeah. the things that we do in the show. People just play their instruments. They sing. They they do whatever. Just freestyle. It's just it's just incredible. Like in the in a carnival episode, I know we're talking about photography, but in the oh. carnival episode, we bring in Kwame Williams, who's a, like a drumming master, a djembe drum master, and he just plays, and then he's playing and he's storytelling about carnival. Wild. You got it's just what we knew we were doing something different when we started <laughs> letting people just play and just freestyle. Oh my lord. Um, so, kids, uh, do we we have a, a bit of a trailer actually? Yeah, I have a clip here uh, from it's. Uh, At YouTube, we got permission to use this. Yeah. Please. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just so you know. <laughs> okay, here we go. Check this out. This is really cool. From 1955, waves of black female immigrants from the Caribbean confronted a new life in Canada. They were a part of a domestic worker scheme where women were recruited across the Caribbean by the Canadian government to be maids for the mid-classes and upper echelons of Canadian society. Many were educated, but most were working class. Their recruitment process was quite rigorous. They had to be between the age of 18 and 35 with no dependents. These women were trained on how to cook a Canadian meal and how to clean a Canadian home. There was a great need to push for opportunities for people to discover and share these stories. The University of Toronto's Fisher Rare Books Collection is one place to start. This is, now, this is what I loved about the show, because while I'm getting my Maestro Fresh West, while I'm getting my Cha Claire, while I am, you know, getting Caravana, I'm getting the 1955 domestic servant program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just that, that, that little truth bomb dropped right in there. And then finding out that Sir Wilfred Laurier, the man who's on our $5 bill, actually had an anti-black immigration policy for a while that was actually instituted. Just, just dropped right in there. Yeah. That's that is really cool because I'm watching watching that and I actually like stop the tape and then I'm like going online going, <laughs> What the hell? Yeah. And it's how did things, I not know this? It's because they didn't teach that to us in school. Because they didn't want us to know. Uh, it's I mean, so much I'm gonna speak for about a minute and then I'll shut up. <laughs> Don't shut up, please. <laughs> so much black history has been completely ignored by uh, uh, the curriculum, the education system. Like I learned about Harry Jerome about 10 years ago. I'm like, how have I never heard of this man? He was probably one of the greatest track athletes that ever lived period. I mean, he was running a, he was running sub 10 second hundred meters in the early sixties when training and shoes and, 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 and uh, uh, Nutrition, I'm struggling for that word for a minute, were not what they are today. They didn't have computers to help figure out the best way to launch. And this guy was running sub 10 seconds in the 60s. I didn't hear about him until 10 years ago when I watched a documentary on him on, on GEM during Black History Month. And I'm like, why? Was it GEM or I, CBC? Might have been. Anyway, that's not important. What is important is that I learned about this man who I was mad that I'd never learned about before. This is a great Canadian, a great Canadian athlete, and one that we should be taught about. But they ignore black history in Canadian schools. And it's a crime. Now, I am part of the Black Employee Resource Group. I know which sounds funny at my employer because I'm obviously very, very wise. I take care of tech stuff. But I'm happy to be uh, a part of the community in the sense that I, I'm just, I want to be on the periphery so I can learn. Because there's like, I mean, the Black Community Mixtapes gives you information that you might not have been aware of before, especially if you look like this, right? Because they just, they don't teach it. It's been ignored. And it's wrong. It's wrong because Black Canadian history is our shared collective history, whether 
white people like me realize it or not. And I've come to realize it, but it just, you know, it was something that just wasn't taught to us. Yeah, it's, it's remarkable, you know, um, it's an easy thing, you know. We put together the show in eight months. Wow. And yeah, eight months. But because we had that history of, you know, making other, you know, documentaries about Black history, we had a good, you know, you know, um, wealth of knowledge, and also we knew who to go to. Like that mm -hmm. photo of the domestic workers outside the plane. Um, I actually made a documentary with, you know. Uh, in, involving this woman who had that picture. She's in that photograph and she told me that I can use it if I wanted to. I said, can I use this? Because nobody has seen these kind of photos, you know, of women actually boarding planes to come to Canada. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they've erased all of this, all of these artifacts that people have. So, you know, it's really important that people, you know, protect their archives, but also, uh, you know, share them, you know, to fill in the blanks because, you know, we see the same, we see, see the same photos and people being shared with, you know, Black History in Canada. We see Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, and we love them, we adore them, but we don't hear or see any of the artifacts from Black Canadians, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need we need to, you know, be aware that that information is out there. Mm -hmm. You just have to look for it. Yeah, well, it's like you said, it's 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 hidden for the most part, and it shouldn't be. And one of the things you talk about in, in the Black Community Mixtapes is how the artifacts are in, in bookshelves and in attics and in garages. And it's it's like, that's a shame. Man. Like, I didn't know about Viola Davis until they announced that she was going to be on the $10 bill. And I'm like, who who is this person? Why have I not learned about this? She was Rosa Parks 20 years before Rosa Parks. Anybody heard her name? So we've 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 got a history we got to make up for in this country. Yeah, Historica Canada does a great job, I believe, in terms of trying to capture these these moments in Canadian history. Um, and you know, I know they do about two or three, uh, you know, films, little one minute films every year. Mm -hmm. and, and they also on their website is they're a great resource. Um, sometimes with people who they can't showcase in a film, they'll have information. They'll have like podcasts and they'll have you know maybe some animation storytelling kind of things happening there but uh, anyways um yeah you just have to look for it and you have to know you have to ask questions mm -hmm. you have to be not be afraid to ask questions about some of these things like that's why we asked the question who is the first canadian you know hip-hop artist or the person to record the first canadian hip-hop record and that took us down a rabbit hole and we just went, we just used that as part of the show. Like, okay, this is this is the problem when you when you go on Wikipedia and all this, this is who they say, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is, is the first, you know, and then you know, the singing fools from a group from Ottawa, you know, white guys, or whatever. Yeah. And we're like, come on, I grew up in hip hop. I like, no, I know Monica Records. They were like, they had a they had a studio in their basement. There's stuff going on there. Like, what's going on? And we actually found uh, Mr. Q's um, uh, sister. She lives in the States and we found her and we got her permission to oh, nice. do this photograph and everything like that. And she was tickled. She was like so happy because nobody had acknowledged her brother. And mm. he's, yeah. And um, she just loved the fact that we were able to do that. I got to correct myself. Thank you, Ms. Miss Sh Shattuck. It's Viola Desmond, not Davis. Viola <laughs> Davis is the EGOT, <laughs> the EGOT winning, uh, award winning actor, filmmaker, director, producer, writer, singer. Yeah, sorry. Right. My apologies. I think a lot of people make that mistake. Is well, it so? <laughs> Desmond Davis, it's, they're both yeah. D's, yeah. the same oh. first name. So, yeah. yeah. Although, you know, I. I'd be perfectly happy to be compared to Viola Davis <laughs> or Desmond. <laughs> right. Both very successful. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask, because a lot of this history is in attics and in bookshelves and whatnot, and the effort to uh, archiving it correctly and creating some pools uh, that people could go to to do research of their own is more recent than it is for other communities. Because, I mean, like, I, I'm learning that there isn't an actual 
home for black archives yet, black history archives yet. Yes. Whereas the gay community already does have one. We've had one for a long time. Um, why is it important for people to be going through what might be in their trunks and their attics and their bookcases and maybe bringing it to attention? Great question. Um, you know, there are a couple organizations that are doing the work, like Black Historical Society of Ontario. And then there's this museum in um, in Amherstburg, who's been around for a long time because of the Black community there in, in Chatham. It is important for us to do this because, you know, a lot of the times this information doesn't get stored correctly. So we've come across people with, with Super 8 film and whatnot that's been, it has mold on it mm. or, um, you know, important manuscripts gets, you know, it's deteriorated and, you know, things get lost, you know, with people moving, with people, you know, passing away. Uh, certain people might think not think that this information is important. So, you know, they check it. And then with everything, that's a, that's a piece of history that's gone mm -hmm. because nobody has seen it. It's very true. So we need to create space where, you know, archives can be collected and, and um, like, like you said, treated properly and stored properly and cataloged mm -hmm. so people can, you know, use search words, proper search words to, to find it. And that's why we had an episode on the archivist at the end, just celebrating them and how cool it is, like all the different people you know, in that episode, trying to find different, like unique ways to showcase, you know, you know, their findings, their own archives. And, uh, and that was beautiful. Like a lot of them have been able to take advantage of it financially. Like you can put together your own traveling, you know, show mm -hmm. with your archives. People are interested, are that interested in, in this material. Um, like Clive Walker's collection, um, at the old friars, uh, you know, um, you know, it was a, a club in, mm -hmm. in, in Shoppers Drug Mart in, in the corner of uh, Young and, and Dundas. He had a, a collection there for, you know, many months. And he had, you know, you know, CDs from Mishy Me to like Julie Black. He had Lillian Allen stuff in there. He had Miss Lou stuff. It was just a really remarkable collection of, of work. Uh, it's, and um, who else am I thinking about? Uh, you know, Ita Sadu at a different bookstore or a different book list. It's a, a bookstore on Bathurst, just south of Bloor. And she has a lot of archives. People are coming to her with their archives. Oh, nice. And like yeah, oh, you haven't gotten to the rest of that. Yeah, you, you look at that episode. When you get to the end, you'll see that people are coming to her with, with their archives and she's storing it. And and um, in in her store and and showcasing it and you know it, it's just beautiful. It just becomes part of the community and and part of different conversations that we have about our history. Wonderful, that's uh, fantastic. Now you're one of the co-founders of the OYA Black Collective. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Not OYA. Okay. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to be my first question: Is it an abbreviation or am I yeah. supposed to say? Oh yeah. Um, what? And you you did that with two other people, if I remember correctly. Yes, um, yes. it was founded with my my business partner. We have two things going on. We have um, Oya oh yeah, Media Group, which is a production company co-founded by myself and Gaddy Conte George. She's another uh, filmmaker. Uh, she directed Mr. Jane and Finch, fabulous person. Uh, so we we created um, that company, and that's a for-profit production company. But because we saw that there was sort of a void um, in terms of younger Black artists, uh, people who've gone to film school, there was a void and there was a problem of them getting jobs in the industry. We decided to, you know, be, you know, found this, you know, we wanted to find, you know, what do you say, develop, create this um, non-for-profit. And um, it's called Oya Black Arts Coalition. And um, we also, uh, you know, 
worked with Natisha Massacoy, who is a really powerful person in the community. And uh, we're we're five years later. We've got you know so many different programs. We have over 150 people uh, wow. graduated from our different programs. A lot of them are doing so well. Some of them are you know working at you know, big institutions like Chorus and um, E1 when it was <laughs> you know not going through what they're going through right now. And um, yeah, let's and, not discuss that. Yeah, let us not discuss that. <laughs> and and different and you know CBC and and some of them are making amazing work and you know having their film showcased at TIFF and they're just doing like, tremendous, tremendously. And a lot of them are alumni. A lot, a lot of our alumni work on our show. So, for in fact, um, we had about four or five, you know, young black filmmakers work on black community mixtapes. Kara, our host, is actually uh, from our second year. Um, she's a participant from our second year um, emerging filmmakers program, and we just saw something in her uh, that she has just, it. She has it. She's she young. Has it. She's yeah. she's got it right, yeah. and she she wanted to do the research on it with um, another uh, young person from our program, uh, Ivano um, Ivano Antonio, and uh, they did a lot of the research. We just gave them. We said research this. We we had the research, but we wanted them to be really involved, and and uh, you know she just evolved into the host of the show, and her personality, her mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm. She's and she's really genuinely interested in this history, and it's just amazing. Just we wanted to create a show that was fun, you know, entertaining, but you could learn a lot, and that young people would want to watch because we want them to t carry the torch with exactly stuff, right. right. And I think that's what we did. I I believe, and I agree one hundred percent. And and Ms. Martin is just. I, I want. A, I would listen to her read the dictionary to me. <laughs> Honest to goodness, the way she uh, she is incredibly confident, self assured. She comes across as somebody you just want to sit and talk to this person because she's she walks into the room, she smiles, and I'm like, okay, I just feel better about myself now. <laughs> Has the aura, you know, that glowing aura that that wants to bring you in. At least that's what I get. Yeah, when she starts, it's on, you know, yeah. and the way she's able to articulate the concepts and make the twists and turns and ask the questions to the audience. It's just, you know, sometimes we're talking about some tough stuff, mm -hmm. but yeah. she gets us through it and, we're, and we feel better about knowing what she's telling us. Well, and, and the way she does it, you yeah. would almost think that she was a veteran because she's quite young. I mean, I'm, I'm 55, so she could be my daughter, <laughs> literally, right? Uh, but you, the way she does it, you think she's been doing this for 30 years because she presents so well. I mean, uh, some people are born with it and she's one of them. Yeah. I hope to see her get more opportunities like this because she's definitely she she's got the chops it. and she, she deserves it. Yeah. So if you're on Instagram or, you know, Facebook or Twitter, just look up Kara Martin and, and tag her, tell her how great she's doing and support her. Ah, oh, lovely. Lovely. Yeah, I, I agree. She is. Uh, I'm just as interested as what's going to happen when she comes on as what's going on in the content, right? Because normally, okay, well, here's the host again. Like, okay, now give me the good stuff. But I'm just as interested when I watch the show, which is a lot, a lot of fun. Put a link to um, your Instagram in the, in the commentary there. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing it right she'll away. Get, she'll, get a, she'll be like, what's going on today? <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you founded this studio to help uh, emerging Black voices mm -hmm. get some opportunities. Mm -hmm. And... Um, from the program now that you're five years in where do you see you've learned some things certainly along the way this and you want you probably have like some ideas of where you can grow to next as a result of that so i was like what's sort of the toughest lesson that you learned and what do you think is the biggest opportunity in front of you yeah, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. And it, as a matter of fact, we're going through um, strategic planning um, about 
our organization and what we offer, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of energy. It's a, it's really, um, you know, takes a lot of time. You, you have to be open to the fact that you're not doing everything perfectly, <laughs> you know? So every year we, um, we reflect on um, what we've done and we, we, um, you know, these do these research studies in terms of, you know, talking to people that's been a part of the programs, the different programs and see what they got out of it, what could be improved. So right now we're in the, in the process of looking at the five years and seeing, okay, what worked and what didn't work and where is the, the most, um, what was the, what's the best use of our time and where's the, where, where what do people need the most? Mm -hmm. Like the, we're doing like a value proposition. Um, and I think we've done a great job at, you know, training young people, uh, you know, the soft and the hard skills of how it is to be in this industry. Because if you notice a lot of young people, they know how to make films and oh, yeah. create work and content. They're like, they're brilliant. They're like really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, sometimes it's the soft skills. Um, mm -hmm. The soft skills is like, you know, you know, how, how to be in this industry, you know, you have to be yourself, obviously, but then there's just this way of, you know, you know, the hierarchy, <laughs> the, you know, you know, yep. how you have to show up on time, how you have to, um, you know, finish what you started, you know, how you have to be respectful. It's just a, this is a different kind of weird and it, way of being, but it, and it might be really foreign to a lot of people, not those mm -hmm. things, but just how it is to be in the film industry and um sometimes you think you make one thing and then it's, you're going to be a star and then you realize oh it doesn't happen and you make the next thing and you're going to be a star and then that can be that's not how it works like most of the time it works like you make something and then you go to the you know back of the line especially in canada not like in the oh, yeah. states where you have all these outlets to right. you know showcase who you are so you know there's a lot of training around that um and but what we find, and, and we did a lot of work trying to build community. So um, when I was coming up, and yes, I did work with Director X. Somebody wrote something about Director oh, X. Yes. I, I used to produce music videos for him back in the 90s. Um, <laughs> um, yes, there's, you know, there's this thing that you have to, uh, when I was growing up, in this industry, like finding my chops and whatnot, there's this thing that happens where you're a black person or you're a racialized person and people try to tell you not to work with each other. Mm. I know, mm. don't trust each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's only could be one in the room, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So we do a great job in getting the young people to know you can you can trust each other you can work with each other so a lot of them are working with each other now and building their own companies building their own you know platforms and whatnot to work with each other and that is great to see because you only get stronger in this industry is when when you have a team when right, you have yes. a team around you and some people work with the same team for 20 years <laughs> So you need to build that. Not to say you want to work with the same people for twenty years, but you have to be, trust people from your community, and we and we do a great job of that. So that's one of the things we want to keep on going, like with what we do, and we also want to um, now that we have a lot of filmmakers out there, we want to do more training with producers, like the ones that want to be producers, because they're the ones who can hire everyone, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. get everybody oh, yes. jobs. No, absolutely. So, Producers and business affairs, we're really concentrating on that, I think, for the next five years, hopefully. Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, how do people find out about you? About me? Well, no, <laughs> about, about, oh, yeah. about the opportunities. Okay. If you go to oyablackarts.com, you can see all of our programs there. Uh, we usually uh, run our programs from July to March. 31st so a lot of our programs are ending now but i think we're going to be starting up new programs uh probably july but sometimes we all like sometimes we have like these pop-up things like a master class and this and you know and that community can come to so yeah look out for that uh you know follow us on instagram we always post what's going on on instagram 
Um, okay. Oh yeah, Black Arts. Excellent. Now, Black Community Mixtapes won an Anthem Award. Yes. I guess the Silver Medal Award. Um, tell us what that's about and how big an achievement that is. In New York. Yeah, that's right. Um, the Anthem Awards is a really cool awards um, in New York City. And they had this category of awards for people who were doing things for the community. And um, they had a category for film and television. And so we applied, but we didn't know that people had to vote, oh. <laughs> that people had to vote. And so we're like, huh? So a week later, people were voting and then we're like, oh, let's just post that we're doing this and all that. And then people voted for us. People voted for us and, uh, you know, and uh, we were selected in you know, silver, you know, silver at the Anthem Awards and it's from New York. And we got a little note from them saying that it was just a great show. We, you know, we're glad that you, you participated in this. And um, it just shows us that our show can cross the border. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the Americans are really interested in this Black Canadian history. And we've also um, applied for the Canadian Screen Award. So we'll see what happens. Um, with oh, that, nice. I think they're going through cool. their nomination now, and we'll see where, where we land on those, but hopefully we'll be recognized in Canada as well. Oh, that would be fantastic. Be yeah. yeah. Let's, let's get some recognition at home where the product was made, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be really nice. Well, it was one, cool. of the, one of the things that was said, uh, I can't remember if it was Tony or if it was Michael Williams who said, you know, young black and hip hop artists in, 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 in the early days, which is, you know, only the mid eighties, if you will, couldn't get anybody to even look at them. He said, and it was similar to what Neil Young and Gordon Lightfoot and Joni Mitchell had to do. They yeah. had to leave the country to get any recognition because we're terrible in Canada. Well, we used to be really terrible in Canada about recognizing Canadian artists. We're much better at it now. And, and I think much music has a lot to do with that, with, you know, the, the next generations that came up were like, let's prop up, let's do, let's, but it'd be nice to get some recognition at home. Yeah. It's a strange thing. I, I don't know if it's just, you know, that we don't like to celebrate achievements in, in Canada. We do it with hockey. Yes. And, and basketball now. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't even think we do it that much with our Olympians, you know, no. like it's no, just like, okay, you won something. Okay. Go sit over there. Um, but yes, you know, master T and, and, uh, Michael Williams and, and people like Ivan Barry, I see somebody, mm -hmm. you know, um, they were really instrumental in showcasing black talent. Uh, and then there was all those people in community and we're just talking about the hip hop episode, but community radio, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there's two community radio stations here uh, in Canada that played hip hop all the time. And, um, you know, you had DJ DTS and Motion on the Master Plan show and John Bronski and um, and then and Power. Um, and they became the, the longest running hip hop show in Canada. Uh, and that was on 89.5. And, uh, and then you had people, um, I think that was out of York. I can't, I can't yeah, mm -hmm. York University. Mm -hmm. And then there was other, another radio show uh, called um, CIUT 90, 89, is that 89.5? No, what was it? CIUT, which one was? University of Toronto, right? Yeah, yeah. It, oh, no, yeah. Ryerson, Ryerson. Ryerson, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CIUT, um, you know, uh, DJ X and Ron Nelson on Fantastic Voyage you know, and every week they would play amazing hip hop and that show would travel around the world really. Oh, yeah. Like people would be coming in, you know, from around, you know, the world to be on that show as guests and whatnot. So people were doing it on their own as well as, you know, we've got, you know, much music doing it. There were people in the community that were doing that and they have archives too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah, you know, it's 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 the the homemade do it yourself thing, which is what really built the industry in this country. Because I mean, you know, prior to 
realistically prior to to Wes Williams, Maestro Fresh Wes, and letting yeah. the backbone slide, nobody in Canada paid attention, like at all. And I remember, I think, was it his second or third album? And I can't remember correctly, but the title of the record was This Kid Can't Be From Canada. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was recording in New York City at the time, right? And uh, he wow. came back home because he said he didn't, uh, if, if I remember in an interview, he was saying he just didn't feel right about being there. Mm. He wanted to be home. He wanted to be in Toronto. He wanted to work with the crew that he knew. And I'm like, I, I, I understand that, you know. And let's face it, New York City is as you've been, I'm sure, a number of times, it's a whole different ocean to swim in. It's tough. It's the, the pace of it. You know, mm. I'm a Toronto girl. I was born and raised in Toronto. I want, this is my home. I mm -hmm. want to celebrate my life, the people that I know, my culture. And New York, you know, I love New York um, for the energy, but mm -hmm. it's tough. It's a oh, real, yeah. like, people are not, you know, people are just, like, so focused on what they're doing and there's not a lot of room for like, Oh, you're over there. You need some help or over there. Yeah. You know, no, you know, and, and I guess it's just a, a system of survival because there's so many people there and the rent's mm. so high, oh, you know, yes. <laughs> um, the rent is too damn high. The rent Everybody is, too is literally damn high. working like the rent is due. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, exactly. Like, don't bother me. I have to pay my rent. You know, um, this five seconds that, you stopped me to ask for directions, <laughs> you know, I could be working. That's like, you know, that's money. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, but yeah, there's so many people like Ma Patrick Nichols and his photography, you know, um, of hip hop back in the day. And we showcased that in the hip hop episode, mm -hmm. you know, dream warriors, Socrates, you know, like all these folks, they have, they have the goods that's, you know, telling us what Canadian history is about, what Black Canadian hip hop history is about. And I think that's remarkable. We well, need to celebrate these people. And, and oh, absolutely. Yeah. You should get Patrick on. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. Um, like, if you could make that happen in any way, sure. We would love to have him on. I'm still kind of uh, feeling goosebumps from you talking about Northern Touch because the first time I heard that track, I lost my mind. I'm like, Damn. And was, when they were when they were at the Junos a couple of years ago, because it was the 20, 20th or 25th anniversary, I can't even remember now, they brought out and they were told not to rap and they did it anyway. And I was like, damn straight. You got to get out there and sing a couple of bars from that track. That is the track that I think changed the landscape in Canada for hip hop oh, yeah. artists. Oh, definitely. It was it, so huge. What, did, what do you mean they told them not to rap? Oh, yeah. Isn't yeah, that the were, whole... They were like just out to present an award and they were like, okay, you don't have time to perform. And I think they just kind of said, yeah, we're going to anyway. I mean, come on. And they said, how about a couple of bars? And they did it. And the audience went nuts because come on, that was the biggest song ever. Yeah. The biggest track ever to come out of Canada. And I mean, I still listen to it every couple of weeks. I'll just, cause it, it's just such a pick me up, you know? Well, I, let me see if I have it. Oh. What it was. Uh, uh, nice. much music video award yes yes i remember i actually watched that Direct that at home it. when that happened yeah wow. oh yeah um, i watched I you watched, watched the show I, I live when it happened i was addicted to much music i so wanted to be a vj <laughs> i really was yeah, I, I was a, i was a dancer so i mean music was on all the time there was like it was at least like two hours to three hours of much music in my diet every day uh, at that period in my life it was just uh, just amazing but yeah i saw that video too the first time and it's like wait a minute it's like rascals and chuck claire angela like wait a minute we do that yeah, that's a U.S. thing. They get everybody all together and do so. Like, we do that now. Cardi, yeah, checkmate. It was, it was like, a, you know, and it's, and it's like the, the, the like it's like we're the, all there. The heavy metal, the little bit of part of me that's heavy Fresh. metal, a little bit we're all kind of together. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah, let's do that. <laughs> and I, to you know, oh. director, I call him Little X. It's so hard for me to call him the director <laughs> X. And I tell him, I call him actually Julian. That's his name. Um, uh, <laughs> Julian Lutz. But um, yeah. And we see each other from time to time, and but I just I still remember that day being on that set, and um, 
him, we had a little bit of a budget. Like it was, it was maybe big for Canadian hip hop budget, mm -hmm. but it wasn't as big as what Mishy and, right. you know, and those guys were, you know, getting from before. Mm -hmm. So it was just a little budget and he made it work. He just made this magical moment. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remember the crew painting the, the, the psych and the walls, different colors. And the, I'm like, we're like, what is he doing? And then he made these little like vignettes and it was just, it was just amazing to watch him to work. And I, I have the video actually, I still have the beta tape. <laughs> um see, I have my own archive. Yeah, and you all of that stuff in Black Community Mixtapes, like I don't know if you notice the Much Music Award is on the mm -hmm. table yeah. and and the little that. thing. Yeah. That's like that's our stuff, right? We're just pulling yeah. it, we're putting it in the show. This stuff um, exists. <laughs> uh, uh, given your involvement in the in the world of hip hop and sort of growing up in there, your take looking back at history is, is going to be different. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I, I didn't notice uh, in, the, um, in the series, and maybe it's just because other people are doing it, uh, but there wasn't anything about Af Africville. Right. No, that's a good point. We had a little bit of, maybe we had some imagery from, from Africville, Africville, but we didn't, uh, we didn't go there. We were told to keep the this, this series uh, from City TV based on Toronto and Ontario. Oh, okay, it's yeah. very, you know, focused yep. on, on those places. Even though we we branch out to the East Coast sometimes when we're talking to George Elliott Clark and in, in the literary, you know, you yep. know, thing and all that. But um yeah, we were we were we were told to keep it in Ontario and and, and Toronto. Um but and, and that was so hard to do. That's why we had to branch out here and there. Uh, just because our, our history isn't all about black history isn't all about Toronto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It isn't. Yeah. It isn't. It just isn't. Well, it, it was it uh, last year I went to a Sens game because I'm in Ottawa and I went mm. to a Sens game and it was during Black History Month. So they had a the NHL is trying to be a little bit more involved finally with the black community and black hockey players that have made the NHL and become quite you know, famous. And they, uh, they had a trailer, uh, like a setup outside, like a, a small rolling museum, if you will, which was really mm -hmm. cool. And I was in there and I was checking it out and I go, Oh, Mark, he goes, Mark Fraser. I go, yeah, I, I, I have not met Mark, but he's my buddy's next door neighbor. <laughs> he's like, what? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, and Mark Fraser is if, if you are a hockey player and you, if, if you're a black hockey player, you probably know who Mark Fraser is because Mark Frazier has welcomed everybody into the NHL. So when a young black player joins the team, he's the first guy to put his arm around him and said, come with me, come with me. Oh, Freddie wow. Brathwaite. Yeah. Freddie Brathwaite went to high school with Mark uh, Frazier. I, I used to, I've played road hockey with Fred Brathwaite. <laughs> I'm old, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I remember when Fred made the NHL, we were all celebrating, you know, even, dumb white guys like me because it was somebody from our community our neighborhood that, that hey he made it you know way to go but for members of the black community that was even a, a, a bigger step up you know to make the nhl the show man it's like come on let's let's not kid ourselves it's uh they've got a lot of work to do when it comes to messaging and and uh, curbing uh, the racist ways that are within the league embedded within it look you can't deny it it's there mm -hmm. i know I've seen it you know, as a, as a, as a goaltender, Freddie was oh, wow. so much better than me, <laughs> but I've seen it. It's there. And the NHL needs to do a lot more work to change the messaging. And, and, you know, they, they, they will put up uh, things like racism is not acceptable. I'm like, yeah, but you're not really doing much about it. You're, it's just, you're sloganeering. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah. Kids want to play hockey. Yeah. That's the bottom line, right? Yeah. Doesn't Just matter the race. Play. Let let them play, and I'm I'm sure you're gonna get damn good players because you're just letting them play. Absolutely, oh, Allison. Um, just before we go, sometimes when we have a guest, we uh, like to give them some uh, little fun rapid fire questions to oh get to know a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee, tea, or hot chocolate. Oh, coffee is my true love, but I don't drink it anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, why not? Oh, I just drank too much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have some issues. I understand. All right. 
vanilla or strawberry? Strawberry. Mm. <gasps> yes. <laughs> um, soccer or tennis? Soccer. Okay. Soccer. All right. Hmm. Reggae or blues? Ooh. Yeah, that's a tough one. Because <laughs> they both make you feel something. Right. I would say reggae, mm. and I have a story for that. But, okay. Um, because my next film is Bam Bam, the story of Sister Nancy. Um, it's the most, she's the most sampled reggae vocalist of all time. She made a legendary album um, called the One Two Album, which the song, the iconic song Bam Bam came out of. And so um, that's that's for Crave, and and we'll be launching that soon this year. Nice, yeah, very nice. Well, you say and, reggae, and I put a link in the chat earlier to Reggae in the Fields, the longest running. Uh, it's so hosted by Junior Smith at CKCU in here here in Ottawa, forty five years on the air since nineteen seventy six. Oh wow! Yeah. Nice. And is there a possibility of a black community mixtapes too? Well. Uh, we're not going to be renewed. It was a limited series. Uh -huh. We knew that. We, we, it was one of those things where we had developed it, um, and um, you know, City TV wanted it. They said, "Hey, we can do we can do this for like one season," and so um, yeah. But we are going to keep the idea. It's our idea. It's like our right. IP. Mm -hmm. So we're we're just gonna you know maybe every couple of years we come up with some more. You know, you never know. You never know. Yeah. Well, that means that neither Crave or Netflix or whatnot could take it up then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get uh, maybe other broadcasters can uh, you know keep it going. They do a they do a season every year. Like That'd different be great. Yeah. That would be great. That would be really great because it, it's really a good show and has a great value. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. We really do thank appreciate it. Thank you right. so much. You guys are great and. Oh, uh, I am sorry about the tardiness. <laughs> no, no, that's not you. That's, that's on you. us. That, that, okay, that's right, totally right. on us. That's totally okay. on us. All right. uh, please, please do come back anytime. Yes, if you've got something going on, please contact us. We would love to have you back. Awesome. Thank you. Take right. care. Have a wonderful Thank day. You. Have Thanks. a great trip. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that was amazing. Right? <laughs> like, holy crap. Um. How much fun was that? I'm I'm seldom left speechless, right? You know me, uh, but for for uh, I'm still I'm still the whole Northern Touch thing is mind blowing to me. It's mind blowing to me. I know she was like there. Yes, well, <laughs> part of it. Uh, oh, just, yeah, floored. I, I seldom speechless, <laughs> and, but I'm speechless right now, it, which is you know not normal for me as as anybody can attest if you know me because I'm a I got a bit of the Irish gab in me. I have it, you see. Um, but wow, that was that was really something. And I hope to have her back again. And there's so much more we could talk to. Of course, I know James is losing his mind. In yes, well, I, I knew I, I knew James would <laughs> love this. It, yeah. He just loves hip hop. Period. And he has he's a big fan of Canadian hip hop in particular. So. Oh, man. Okay, so look at his comments. If you keep having guests like that, I will never talk porn names again. Oh, gee, now I'm I'm, I'm actually torn. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Oh, oh, man. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm, I was very excited. When they, when they wrote us uh, and asked, you say, yeah, we just won an Anthem Award, would you be interested? And yes. I'm thinking... Yeah, absolutely. Um, because it's it's hard sometimes to reach out and find someone that'll take a chance on you. So, um, mm -hmm. particularly when you have like theme shows, if you want to get, I mean, you know, this is our third season and this is our first time we've ever done anything specifically Black History during Black History Month. And it's not for lack of desire. It's it's right? an oversight on, uh, oversight on our part. We, no, no, we need to be more observant. It wasn't an oversight. It's, uh, I, I, well, at least not for my part. It's, you know, you don't rate enough at a at some point along the way, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, now sometimes we reach out to people, right, and they say yes, and now people have started reaching out to us, uh, which, which is relatively new, but you know when there's a theme month that comes along finding a guest that can bring something meaningful 
because who isn't already booked up because it's a, it's a heavy media month uh, is a little tricky. Mm -hmm. So uh, when the opportunity came around, it's like, yes, because we've been wanting to do something like this for a long time. And now we're able to make that happen. So hopefully as we uh, keep growing, when there will be occasions such as this, you know, you know, right now it's our first one and we only have one who knows maybe, Later on in the future, a couple of years down the road, we might be able to have a whole week of show or like, you know, once a, well, well, once a week for a month or something as well, we grow and as we make connections and stuff. But I'll reach out to my it, buddy Greg and see if I can get him to come on the show. Yes, because that poem, the little snippet that was in that episode, people need to hear it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was actually going to read it or play it or something. But if you know him and you can get him, I would much rather him come here and say it in his own voice. Yeah, I'll see. I'll reach out to him today and see if he'd be willing to come on the show. Oh, that would be fantastic. Um, I don't know if he can. We'll work with, you know, as we work with yes. the schedule. So if, if he can't do a live, if he can do like, and we can record something, that'd be great. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, here's the thing I wanted to show you, my friend. When you were talking about Mishimi. Mm -hmm. All right. It'll be the photo on the right. Yeah, that's Mishi. Michael Chambers, a One very live. Yeah, this is the photography of Michael Chambers. Uh, he's also featured uh, during uh, the show um, as uh, someone that we should know about in the in the section about photographers. Um, he has some pretty provocative work uh, and some beautiful work as well. And uh, I'm hoping to uh, get an email off to him to actually ask him as well if he would like to, to come about the show to talk about his work. So I won't show too much of his photography now, but if you are curious, uh, yes, his uh, website is michaelchambersphotography.com, and uh, you can see a lot of stuff there. Uh, well worth your time. He does really good work. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. All right. Uh, there's... A couple of things that I'm dying politically to say, but so, I want to keep this show about this. Yes, uh, we'll talk but, about that tomorrow. But kids, do not think I have not noticed them. No, even because just, I have. <laughs> don't worry, we, we'll we'll get into the whole um, mouthpiece thing from yep. yesterday tomorrow. Yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> so, kids and cubs, but but this was great out and so on. So I I don't want to taint it with anything else. No. Uh, Kits and Cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Of course, sharing is caring, so please tell your peeps and poops all about us, particularly this episode, because I think this is one of the ones we're going to be proud of. Very much um, so. Of having done. Uh, I, I, I'm at loss for words all of a sudden. <laughs> um, if you do not... I'm really excited. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> if you, you do not want to miss an episode, you do not have to. You just uh, scan that QR code that's right under my chin, and thanks to the Ray Girl, that will bring you to our pod page. That's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And that way, when you subscribe, you do not have to miss anything. When we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it will come directly to you except for our podcasts, which we remind you are exclusively on our True North Eager Beaver Media site, which is where you can also go to support us by clicking like, share, and subscribe. Make like Kit Elaine go there today. And we very much appreciate that as well. We just had a podcast last Saturday, so there's one fresh out there for you. And if you'd like to support us in other ways, Please do by going to the emergency hydration fund here at the Beaver Lodge. The QR code that's by Mr. Grizzly's head will take you right there. Or if you're listening, go to coffeeko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver. As two more of you did yesterday, unfortunately, I can't read the comments up uh, at the moment. But uh, thank you so, so very much. We will give you proper credit uh, in a future show. But we have noticed they come in and we are very, very grateful. Because democracy is something that you do. Write your MPs, write your MPPs, demands for some better journalism. Maybe ask uh, what it is that they're doing to promote and uh, help the black community in their region. Right? Black entrepreneurship, 
need some help. Black artists need some help. I've got anything some, that could be done to preserve some black history. Good stuff too. I've got some links I'll add. Um, uh, I don't, I don't have them right in front of me right now there, but I'll add some links in later in the week, uh, that you can use as resources for, for, uh, educational purposes for learning things. And then of course there's a, there's an entire, uh, website here in Ottawa that helps black entrepreneurs, uh, develop their business. And I've, I've gone to it number, a number of times. There's, there's some really good companies out there too that could, and I'm like, yeah, I'm happy to. <laughs> Happy to help somebody. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm really struggling. <laughs> I don't want to give a hand out. I want to give a hand up. So if I can, if I'm in a position to help a business, I'm going to do it. And, and if I can help somebody in the black community, I, I feel it's incumbent upon me to be able to do so, to use this white privilege, put it to work, to help others. And come on, let's just do the right thing. It's not a handout. It's not. It's, it's. I'm, I'm trying to come off not sounding like an arse, but I think I'm sounding like an arse, so I'll just shut up. <laughs> I'm struggling for words this morning. What can I say? It's rare. <laughs> Miss Grizzly's words of wisdom don't sound like an arse, and if you are, stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> That's my words of wisdom today. <laughs> From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager Beaver saying, it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some actual words of wisdom? That's about it. If you realize you've dug yourself into a hole, stop digging. <laughs> ah, thank you, Kits, uh, for all those really, really, really cool comments today. Uh, we're glad to bring you a little bit of happy and a little bit of fun today. Uh, we'll get back to the regular stuff tomorrow. Yeah, and tomorrow all right. Will be, tomorrow will be different. I don't know. Yes, Mr. Grizzly. Tomorrow, tomorrow will not be joyful. <laughs> Today was joyful. Tomorrow will not be joyful. Ah, we'll try to bring a little joy. Mr. Grizzly, roll some credits, please. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. All right. And before we go, and the Canadians who do us proud, uh, sub congratulations to the women's four by 100 meter relay team who won bronze at the World Aquatics Championships, and Cindy Pickram, who won a silver in the 200 IM, and oh, cool. to Rebecca Marino, who won the singles event in tennis at the $100,000 Irapuato event and made the final in the doubles. Big Drake weekend for her. Drake. All right. All right, I'll uh, I'll see you.